ready. Good morning, everybody joining us live stream this morning. I was just telling everybody if they want to record this message today, you could do that. But what Jennifer does when she's over here is she's recording it on our channel under my name, under Carol Abbott, on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you ever wanted to go back and you didn't get it recorded on the phone, um, I, I like to sometimes just listen to it. Of course, I probably don't like to look at myself on camera. I probably need to get used to doing that to, to see where I'm messing up, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you have a paper and pencil handy, you might want to have that too. So Angela, the Lord, Angela Smith, the Lord is saying to you, I just was seeing the glory of God upon you. He just kept freezing, doing a freeze frame with my eyes on you. And I, I see the Lord is just going to turn some things around, but I see a triple thing. I don't know if it's turning something around and then going another turn. Or if it's three different things, but there's a triple turnaround in your future. And the Lord says, you keep going straight on your path, daughter. I'm going to I'm going to turn you around, even though you're going straight on the path of righteousness. I'm going to turn things. You just keep going forward. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And the Lord says, I am going to display my wonders before you. And people are going to say, oh, my gosh, did you see what the Lord did for Angela Smith? Turnarounds can be issues of our heart. It can be circumstances and it can be relationships. Perhaps those are, are the three things. But the Lord says, I, you know, I see you journaling daily. And just and some of it just you're just praising the Lord. And as you're journaling, you are right. That you're just making the Lord's wonderful observations and you're recording it. Some days it just may be that. Other times, the Lord is going to work out some things from your heart that need healing. They're going to come into your spirit and you're going to be working it out on that paper. And you just keep writing and writing. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you, daughter, prophetic words. I'm going to give you um Words, well, I'm going to speak into your life for you personally. And when those, if you hear, dear daughter, dear aunt, start writing. And when the Lord's giving you a word, you just keep writing. If the Lord's giving you something and you just, you just sense that, write. Don't try to edit. Don't try to punctuate. You go back and look at it later. You just keep writing and writing with the spirit of what the Lord is saying. And then I'll go back and I'm like, okay, I'll put a comma, or like the in or the die is missing. You know, it's good to go over it afterwards while it's still fresh so you can make sure you have the nuance in it. You know, prophetic words, you feel them in your spirit. You feel them. There was a word I had for Denise. We've been doing marriage, premarital counseling for Pastor David and his sweet honey here, Denise. And we met at a restaurant and we thought we were done and we're leaving. I forget where it was a restaurant called True. Right, Tom? And we got out of the booth, and all of a sudden, the glory of God came upon Denise, and the Lord just downloaded, and he started talking to them about being bold in their prayers and getting together, uh, talking about what do they want their life to look like, and then begin to ask God, I mean, as, as wild as they can imagine, be bold. It's like, it was really, in fact, be bold. Don't, don't shy back. When I said that word, that feeling, that presence of God was upon me. When Apostle Leon spoke to them this weekend, there it goes again. I felt, and he was reiterating some of the very things that I said. Not not everything, but it was there. And then I felt that word again. I'm like, oh, that's like that night at that restaurant. And it, and it comes back. So when you write the words that God's giving you, he also wants you to feel it. So sometimes you just got to rest in it. Just be there. Be there in it. Let it saturate into you because then what God says to you, Holy Spirit will bring back again. Okay? And you're going to feel it again. There's been dreams that are like so prolific that I remember the colors and it's like I can go there and I'm like back in that again because it's a prophetic dream that God imparted to me. Amen? Well, praise God. Um, we're going to have fun today. Yes, we 
Hallelujah. And for those of you that had a battle getting here today, praise God you're here. I believe you're not going to regret that decision to, to, to battle on through there. Praise the Lord. So this morning, well, let me say this. I've had, you know, just a busy couple of days. For all day Friday, uh, Saturday, probably before that, I just don't remember what Thursday even looked like. But very physical days while we're doing some things that the Lord had us, has us to take care of with our house and, <clears throat> and uh, getting the other one ready for a rental. So very physical kind of, you know, couple of days. Wouldn't be expecting me to get up at 640 this morning, get in the show, praising the Lord, singing, singing to the Lord. And the scripture came to my, I mean, just like it woke up, just almost exhilarated once I was coming to you in the shower. And uh, I was hearing, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. And, and I'm hearing that and I'm singing, I'm like, Lord, you are delicious. You are delicious. I have tasted you. You are delicious. And I am seeing the things you're doing without a patch on this eye. I am seeing and I am tasting your goodness. Yeah. So my testimony is the Lord is delicious and he is wonderful to be seen in our midst. Yeah. So Lord God, I ask you to show up for each person here. I ask you to release what you did for me this morning to each person, just a new invigoration of life and vitality and zeal and passion for you. So, before I get into the message, if you don't mind, I'm going, I, so I'm like, oh gosh, where is that scripture? Taste and see that the Lord is good. I, I like to hardly wait. I think I got to my computer before I got my coffee, I think. And I'm like, where is that? Where is that? Well, Psalm 34. Okay, so let's just saturate in the, in the word of the Lord. It's a beautiful psalm. So let me just read this out loud for you, and then we'll get to the part that I'm telling you about but you all are going to love this i will bless the lord at all times that's how it begins yes. his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul has made its boast in the lord the humble shall hear of it and be glad oh magnify the lord with me can you all do that? Can you all magnify the Lord yes. with me this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. And let's exalt his name together. We just lift up the name of Jesus, the name of Jehovah. Verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me. How many of you have that testimony? Mm -hmm. And he delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and deliver them. FYI, we pray for you every week, and many of the weeks, the Lord leads Pastor David and I to make over 300 declarations releasing the 12 legions of angels assigned to this church over you and every part of your family and your activity. From salvations to finances to the Holy Spirit being upon you to you moving in gifts. I think is it 306 declarations we made? And very much this is what the Lord had us doing another prayer covering before and right now each week it just gets powerful just we make declarations releasing the angels before i came here there was a word that there was 12 legions of angels assigned to this church that's a lot of angels for all this little little few people here i i think you know what i think there's enough angels that if we got some more people in here they take care of them too yeah. what do you think do you know some people that need some angels working on their behalf well, why don't we share the word? Why don't we bring some more sheep into this place to drink and see that the Lord is good? Yes. Amen? Amen? Meanwhile, we're not letting angels be, be idle. 
God's given them charge over us. And so we're decreeing, according to the word of the Lord, that they are active over you, your family, your household, your loved ones, and all that you do. Amen? Thank you. <coughs> Praise God. Just a second. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is this a good place for a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Isn't it nice to know people are praying for you? Yes. If you feel to pray for us, you just go right ahead whenever you think of us. Yes. Amen. Okay. So we were at verse 7. That the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. Now, fear does not mean we're afraid of God is going to hit us with a stick, okay? Fear of the Lord means, as Cheryl said one time, reverential, re reverential awe in, um, so it's a fear of respect and reverential awe, the awesomeness of God. That's what the fear means. It doesn't mean to be afraid that God is up there just waiting for you to mess up. He is not. He is waiting for us to call on his name so he can be of help to us. Amen. Verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Yes. So, Lord, we release our trust in you. No matter what we're going through, Brent. No matter what we're going through, Denise. The Lord says... He blesses the man who trusts in him. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man who trusts in him, which comes right out right after, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Verse 9. Oh, fear, let's say, oh, respect and the reverential awe of the Lord, you his saints. We can't expect everybody that doesn't know him to know how awesome he is. But our testimonies may give them a clue. Yes. There is no, there is no want, there is no want this is an awesome song. for those who fear him. I know, isn't it just beautiful? I mean, wow. Okay. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Those who seek the Lord. And I believe seeking is not just asking him for, but it's, it's a seeking him and thanking him for what he's done. Acknowledging what he's done. I mean, we may think, oh, yeah, Lord already knows. Well, let's acknowledge him and thank him for what he's done. Amen? Amen. Well, like, I thought it was pretty awesome after spending all the energy I had the last two days, and I wake up all invigorated, and I'm singing and praising the Lord. It's like, oh, God, thank you for the strength. You know, I, I was a little concerned, like, oh, God, how am I going to preach on Sunday? But he never fails me. So now those thoughts, they don't linger more than about a quarter of a second. And then they're being flooded with faith. Yes. Like, no, my God, he's going to take care of me. And you know what? I know some of you have been fighting off headaches or different things to even get in here today. But and I've had that when I come in. And you know what I remember? And I start decreeing and declaring that when when I'm weak, the Lord will make me strong. So if I'm weak, it's okay, Lord. You're just going to fill in, and you're going to make it better. Always, whenever there's a challenge, he makes it better. Yes, it it's usually a sign, oh, God's going to show off today. If the enemy's trying to come against me or something, oh, watch out. Here comes the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 11. Come, you children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. There was an anointing upon Apostle Vicki, the sevenfold spirit of the Lord. Rested upon her. There was an impartation in this <coughs> supernatural experience in Rome in the 70s. The fear of the Lord is one of this of the sevenfold spirit that is to rest upon us as believers. Okay? The sevenfold spirit says the spirit of this is Isaiah 11. The spirit of the Lord rests upon me. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge, knowledge of the Lord, knowledge and reverential fear of the Lord. 
Amen. So gra grab grab hold of that. Amen. This fear of the Lord, it, it's also when, when we ponder the faithfulness and the righteousness of God, it keeps us on track where we want to stay on track on that fear of righteousness. The fear of the Lord will help keep us in check. Again, not that we're afraid um, of the Lord trying to catch us out of step, but you know what? When you realize how much the Lord loves you, it's more motivation that you just want to please him. Yes. You don't want to disappoint him. When we mess up, Jesus is there and we plead the blood. Verse 12. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your I love this. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. There can be some kind of a confrontation or a difference of opinion going on. And sometimes, is it really worth getting into a battle about? Sometimes it's just seek peace. Be a peacemaker. Sometimes we have to give up our right to be right. But, but is it really... Is it a life and death thing that we have to be right? Sometimes seek, seek peace. And Jesus said, he talked about the peacemakers at the, on the Sermon on the Mount. So depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And then right above that was keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. One of the prayers I, I pray to help me do good is, Lord, put a guard at my mouth. Keep watch at the door of my lips. I think the more prayers we can pray about our mouth, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> Amen. Verse 15, and I love this. You all are going to love this. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are open to hear their cry. Yes. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ear is ready to hear their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them from just a couple of their, oh no, I'm sorry. That says all of their troubles, not a couple. Yes. The Lord delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near those who have a broken heart and saves those who have such, saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yep, it happens. We go through some stuff. But the Lord delivers him out of, again, do we be repetitive? Uh, them, all. them all. He delivers them out of them all. He guards all his bones and none of them is broken. And this is a scripture that refers to Jesus' legs were not broken on the cross. When they were getting ready to break his legs, they didn't. None of his bones were broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate righteousness shall be contemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. How many servants do I have in the house of the Lord? Yes. And none of those who trust him shall be condemned. Amen? Amen. Go, go back and look at that this week. Isn't that just an awesome song? Yes, it, is. It, it, it helps us to begin to praise the Lord and also reminds us of his promises. And he's looking out for you. He loves you. You're his child. And he cares for you. And that was just a bonus. That, that was just the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't part of my message, but then I, you know... It was such an awesome exhilaration this morning. Like, I've got to share my testimony. The Lord is delicious. Thank you. And that's such a beautiful song. So, I have a prophetic word that the Lord gave me on the last day of January of this year. The 31st of January, 2024. And the title would be, Expect... Gospel glory to inundate the earth with revival. Amen. Yes. So oh, yeah. 
I, I didn't even get to get this hand uh, type yet. So this is what I, you know, sometimes you, can't, you, can be, you just start writing by hand. And I love to write what the Lord has written me, uh, given me by hand. So I was hearing, um, I forget what I was doing, but I heard gospel glory. Gospel glory. And I'm like, oh, what, what is that? So I heard when you hear a word, then grab your tablet and just start writing what the word says. So if I see something, I write down that I, I see this in my spirit. If I hear it, I write, I hear. So I write, I hear gospel glory hitting the earth in a storm of revival, unindating the earth. Yeah, that's a good place for a hallelujah. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm seeing, I remember when I was getting this word, I was seeing some things like some secular people trying to want to handle this, right? But this is what I was hearing. Man cannot control it. Stop it or hinder it. The glory of the gospel accounts unfolding in modern time people realizing that they're experiencing these miraculous events that parallel the works of christ and his disciples in their midst in modern times he's going to be paralleling the gospel accounts i just thought i wrote holy hallelujah, holy hallelujah. <laughs> No room for disbelief as the Bible accounts of their youth. Okay, so this may be people experiencing this that maybe do not know the Lord as well. But I wrote, no room for disbelief. They're not going to be able to discount it. Okay, that Bible accounts of their youth replaying in their memory, even though they don't know exactly what the scripture is. Their experiences unfolding supernaturally will remind them of a story in the Bible, of a Sunday school lesson, or perhaps told to them by their grandmothers. And recognizing, and then in quotes, this is God. They're going to realize it's what's happening to them in modern times, parallels these Bible stories, these accounts of Jesus and his disciples when they were Amen. perhaps younger. Yes. Holy Spirit will bring it freshly to their remembrances. Their testimonies will be gospel glory in their midst. So what I said, so now then, yeah, Lord, what do you, what do you want me to do with this? Okay. And what I was sensing the Lord was saying was I was seeing beginning to study the Gospels so that we are more familiar with the Gospel accounts. And maybe we, you haven't read the Gospels lately. And this, and this is what I was feeling the Lord was saying, Mark. God wants to give you a perspective, a, a new perspective. I would also say have something to take notes, okay? And I'm, I'll say this again at the end. If you have a study Bible, um, like this one here, it's one of my favorite Bibles. This one here is a life application Bible. Um, and it has notes at the bottom, but what I love is it has like profiles of, of who's in it. It has maps. It has some other charts. Um, it has a section where it gives you a preview about each, about the gospel before it begins. And sometimes those things are helpful to do for study. That, don't worry about it. Just start reading the Gospels, starting with Luke. So I was kind of curious as to, um, well, actually, before I get too far ahead of myself. The accounts of the Gospel of Jesus' teachings. Okay, this is a great time to see what, what did Jesus teach again. Remind us, what did Jesus teach? The workings of the miracles that he did, and also how did he train his disciples? And as you're watching how he trained his disciples, it's exactly how he wants to train you. Okay, so this would be a great study, is to start studying the Gospels here. 
and we'll be preparing ourselves for this next move of God that he's preparing us for. We know revival is coming. And I'd ask, like, what is it going to look like, Lord? What is it going to look like? So here's just a little bit of a prophetic sneak peek of an inkling, okay? So if we're going to begin with Luke, it's like, what is unique about Luke? So I started to, to study that. So I want to give you a little bit of an introduction on Luke to get you excited about opening up the gospel and beginning there. Now, you know, John is great, and it's the disciple who Jesus loved. And John has a lot of unique things about it. I think you've all heard that. It's not as close to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's kind of the book of Acts. But I believe the stories for the book of Acts are also, it's what Jesus taught the disciples to do. And I believe it's kind of like gospel accounts as well, you know. I believe we're going to be seeing some of those as well. So just to remind you, I'm sure some of you know a little bit about Luke, but he was a physician. He was Greek. And he was a Gentile Christian. And it is thought that he is the only Gentile author in the entire New Testament. So I thought that was interesting. Luke also records inspired hymns of praise. So notice where those are. You know, get, get your pencil or, you know, they have the highlighters that are not ink, but like a waxy yellow, and you can use that in your Bible. You know, and start marking it up, you know. There'd be times when Lord brings something back, and then I've marked it, and I can just go right to it. <clears throat> now, we know that John has a lot of unique parts that are not in the other three, what they call the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But get this. It needs to be noted that <sighs> In Luke, chapters 9, verses 51, verse 51 through chapter 18, 35. So 9, verse 51 through 18, verse 35 is not found in any other gospel account. The purpose of Luke's gospel is to present an accurate account of the life of Christ, and Luke's desire was to present Christ as a perfect human and a divine Savior. Luke, by the way, is a perfect one to write such an um, accurate and detailed account, not only because of his medical background, he would have been one that was sharp to observe details, but he's also a noted historian which I didn't, I didn't remember knowing that about him. So Dr. Luke puts great emphasis on dates and details connecting Jesus to the events and people in history. So he's saying, you know, Jesus was here during the time of Caesar, during the time of Pontius Pilate. He's linking these that can be documented back as historical people, and Jesus was there. Okay. The reason that this is so important is that Luke provides all these details so that we can believe in the reliability of the history of Jesus's life. And it's just a, it, it's just a beautiful gospel account. Most importantly, Luke wants you to be able to believe with certainty that Jesus is God. Amen. That's why he lists everything so accurately, links it with history, gives you specific details, because he wants you to know this really happened. Another beautiful part about, uh, are y'all getting excited? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit even? Okay, good. Oh, some of you are getting a lot excited. I see that. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> I see Denise. Uh, you, you three back there, you're all kind of lit up there. That, that, for me, it looks like a little triangle there. And you're, all, you're all getting it. Praise God. Okay, so another beautiful part about Luke's account is how the Holy Spirit is present at Jesus' birth. During his ministry and during the resurrection of Christ. So then, there's an emphasis on the Holy Spirit. And you know, Luke's well, at Christmas time, you know, we just had December, right? What's the account we go to for Jesus' birth? 
with all the details. I love the angels and the shepherds in the field, all that. It's Luke, Luke chapter two. I think it starts in one, but it's chapter two. Luke, he just gets right into things, right? And if you read Acts, what happens in chapter two in Acts? Pentecost. He like gives you a little bit and then like, bam, here you go. Here's the, here's the, all the good stuff, right? So <clears throat> back to the Holy Spirit. Jesus reveals, or I mean, I'm sorry, Luke reveals that Jesus lived in complete dependence on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that should inspire us. Okay, so notice when that's happening. And, and Jesus is our role model. And so this should be reminding us of our dependence on sweet Holy Spirit. Amen. Each day. So here are a few things to entice you. Okay. What I just shared about the gospel of Luke to begin to read it. And then John is just loaded with, with good stuff, you know, so then get into John and, um, just enjoy it. I want you to enjoy yourself in this Bible study. If you have a study Bible, use it. If you don't, just, just, um, and maybe you just like to study on your computer. You know, there's ways to pull up BibleGateway.com on your computer. And then I think if you're savvy at that, ways to click and highlight and make notes and make that your, your form of study as well. Um, and then I would also suggest having some, a tablet, and pen ready to go because the Lord's going to give you revelation. And if some of you start getting a message that you say, oh, Lord, you know what? When I was just studying my Bible, just a girl in the church, and I'd be writing notes of revelation God would be giving me. And all of a sudden, I like see people out there, like I'm talking to people. And I caught on eventually. I, I'm putting these in file folders. And eventually, it's like, oh, I'm going to be preaching. So now if I see them, like, oh, this is not just for me. So sometimes I get personal words for me. Like I got one. Right here in the service today, I got out the paper and I was writing down what the Lord said. But when I see people in front of me, that I go, oh, this isn't just for me, this is for the body of Christ. So I want you all to catch on. We are a church that believes in activating your gifts. Yes. If you start getting something like, Pastor, I really got something hot here. And, I, you know, can I talk to you about this? I think maybe this message to be preached. Show me what you got. Let's talk about it. Let's, okay. Lord God, I just activate each one and their ministry calling and then their discipleship and their witness and preaching and testimonies of you, Lord, in Jesus' name. What did I do this morning? I just shared with you a testimony. I shared with you a little prophetic word the Lord gave me. And then I'm sharing with you what I felt he said to do with it, that we need to start getting into the Gospels. Amen? Isn't that exciting? Yeah. But you're going to get out your Bible or your computer, get out your tablet. Get a cup of coffee, light a candle, do something fun. Enjoy yourself. Make it a date with the Lord. Amen? Yes. You know, if you all were to come down to my house, I'd probably get something to eat for you, and I'd light some candles, and I'd make sure the light was just great. Well, if the Lord's coming to your house, why not do that too? Get a little snack. Have some Have some scent. Because he is, what do we know? That the Lord is, uh, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good, and he is delicious. Yes. Say, Lord, I want to sup with you. Let's have some coffee. I'm going to get a little coffee or tea. I'm going to have a little scone. Oh, I love scones. And, or shortbread. <laughs> and I'm going to light a candle. I'm going to put on some music, some anointed music. And I'm just going to have a glorious time with him because I love him. And he has things he wants to share with me. And you know what? Supernatural thing happens. I get energized in his presence. And so will you. Amen. He's going to minister you. He's going to, he can touch you and heal you. He can break through in your thought process. You know, the Lord wants to change our mindsets. And I think we talked about this before. And when Apostle Liam was here, the Lord wants to reveal to you limitations in your thinking. Let me give you a little quick example. I have certain thought process that I think help me enable me to do things. You know, I'm a list maker and da da. But sometimes, let's say the Lord is showing me to do something. The next thing that happens in my mind, whether it's the enemy or whether it's just my, I have these limited thought processes that say, oh, but you've got to do this and that first. Okay? So I want you to notice in your mind, Lord, begin to, to show them when are their thought processes tripping them up and show us so we can be aware to change that. OK, because what happens is, let's say I'm putting something else in front of this or that. Then it didn't get done. Then it becomes procrastination. 
Yes. Okay? And the Lord has shown me two or three things that once you're aware of it, you can then catch it and, and be aware to then like, Holy Spirit, I want to think like you. So I try I put on the mind of Christ. I bring every thought into captivity of Christ. So Lord, show me where my natural mind is tripping me up because I want to be right on, right on task with you. Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Lord God, we just seal up everything that's been done here today. I just break off every spirit of procrastination, every yeah. hindering mindset. Lord God, I just thank you for deliverance even right now. I ask you to touch each one, touch their minds. And I pray, Lord God, for the impartation of the mind of Christ. Yes. Yes. Lord, breathe upon them. Breath of God, come upon them. Touch their hearts, Lord. There's some They have some heart issues that are also tripping them up. Lord God, I ask you to heal those issues. Heal the memories of the past. Lord God, I ask you to heal the trauma that is locked up in their cells and in their DNA. Lord God, right now, I ask you to heal the trauma. Some of them need healing in their blood. Something with the blood, I don't know if it's infirmity or there's something quite or not flowing right. Lord God, whoever has an issue with the blood and the flowing in their veins and being clean, Lord God, I ask you, Jesus, for an impartation of your blood into their bloodstream. And Lord, I ask you to breathe upon them, breathe into them. You know, there's treatments a doctor does where they put oxygen into the blood and it helps get rid of disease. Right now, along the same lines, Lord, Breath of God, breathe upon them into their lungs and into their bloodstream, and your breath heal whatever's going on in their blood. Whatever's going on in their blood. Whatever's going on in their minds and their hearts. I thank you for a triple healing today. Some things are going to fall off. In two weeks, you're going to notice, oh, I don't do that anymore. I don't think like that. Oh, I'm not having that problem anymore. The Lord says, I am healing you of various things, and I am setting you free this day. Just, just like Pastor Tom played this morning. The Lord is setting you. What was it? I will live again. Lord God, I just thank you for new life, that they're going to live again. Brent, you have a whole new life before you that is not what the past has been. The Lord, he's been... He's been Jehovah Sneaky, he is setting you up for success. I thank you that as you breathe upon them, there's some of you, you're going to be sleeping better at night. There's like there's something restless that keeps waking you up at night. Lord, if it's the legs or the thoughts, the restless legs or the thoughts, I mean, that, Lord God, I thank you for blessed rest and peace. Yes. For each one, they're not going to wake up thinking about the stuff, but they're going to wake up like I woke up this morning, excited about you and all the things you're doing in their lives. Mary, I just said there's there's like some little fears or just some little things that somehow sometimes just um. Oh, God, cause a little bit of anxiety. And the Lord says, my daughter, I'm relieving you of that today. And I'm just breathing peace upon you. The Lord says, there was there are some things, it's, it's even the way you were kind of wired, and maybe even some of your sisters feel that effect as well. The way you're wired with just some things, the way you grew up, it's the things where you can just get a little nervous about some things. And the Lord says, you can trust me. And you're going to notice some things fall away, but I want you to start to trust me. And when you start to notice you have that little bit of anxiety, just call on my name. And the Lord says, I'm your Papa. I'm your Abba. I'm right there by your side. And, and Mary, it's like I see the Lord's hands right on your shoulders. He's right behind you. He says, I got you. I got you. And the Lord reminds you that the glory of the Lord is your rear guard. Amen. Of God. 
Lord, there's many here concerned about their loved ones, their children, grandchildren. Lord, I ask you to breathe upon our families. And many have been going through some things. Lord, I ask you to breathe upon each one that we care about in our heart. And some are grafted into our family, some are dear friends. And the Lord says, I'm going to touch each one. It's like, um, you know, it's like the Lord is, it's like a baby over his shoulder. It's like those ones that are in your heart right now. It's like he's holding them like right on his shoulder, like you, like you'd hold a baby, like a mom would hold a baby. And the Lord says, as I care for you, I, I care for them. Thank you, Lord. See, love what you've done here today, Lord. We give you all the glory. Amen. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we will celebrate the Eucharist, also called the Lord's Supper, a Holy Communion. Amen. This was instituted by our Lord Himself before He left us. He said, Let's do this as often as you ought. Hallelujah. Luke 22, 19 and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Thank you, Lord. Please repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you for bearing my symptoms and sicknesses at the cross. Thank you for bearing my symptoms and sicknesses at the cross. So that I may have your health and wholeness. So that I may have your health and wholeness. I declare that by your stripes. I declare that by your stripes. By the beatings you bore, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes that fell on your back, by the lashes that fell on your back, I am completely healed. I am completely healed. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive your resurrection life in my body today. Your resurrection life in my body today. Hallelujah. 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 Please partake. Thank you, my body. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Not a cup. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that has washed me whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that has washed me whiter than snow. Your blood has brought me forgiveness. Your blood has brought me forgiveness and made me righteous forever. And made me righteous forever. And as I drink, and as I drink, I celebrate and partake, celebrate and partake of, the of the inheritance of the righteous, 
which includes preservation, preservation. healing, healing. Wholeness, wholeness, and all your blessings. And all your blessings. Now of the cup. Thank you. As I eat the body of the anointed one, I drink the blood of the anointed one, I dwell in the anointed one, and the anointed one dwells in me. Now let the full healing effect of Christ's sacrifice Sacrifice. Be manifested in me. Be manifested in me. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By virtue of Jesus' earthly incarnation. By virtue of Jesus' earthly incarnation. Public humiliation. Public humiliation. Severe mutilation, severe mutilation, brutal crucifixion, brutal crucifixion, miraculous resurrection, miraculous resurrection, glorious ascension, glorious ascension, and continual intercession. And continual intercession. I am completely empowered. I am completely empowered. For total, for total, eternal, eternal victory. Victory. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the absolute power and potency of your living word. You, the body and blood of Jesus defeats the enemy and brings abundant life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So let it be. So let it be. Amen. 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 Good morning, Glory Point. <laughs> oh God of life and love and peace, we witness the violence and injustice in your holy land, and our hearts break. Our hearts break for the people of Israel, for the victims of violence, attacks from Hamas, for those who live with fear and insecurity, for yes. those who suffer from the intergenerational trauma of violence. Yes. yes. Our hearts break for Palestinians, for the victim of violence attacks by the vil by the oh, gosh, by the Israeli military, for those being denied water, electricity, and medical care, for those who are refugees long displaced from their homes. We especially pray the weapons of the war be laid down, that walls of separation be dismantled, that prisoners be released, that demonizing of the other cease, yes. that political leaders seek the good of all people in Palestine and Israel. Yes. O oh God, whose heart breaks for the world, may your justice dwell in the land, may your righteousness abide in fruitful fields. Yes, May the Lord. effect of righteousness be quietness and trust forever. May the effect of justice be peace, enduring peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. For Ukraine, Father, we continue to pray for your protection for the Ukrainian people and the military. Continue to open up strategies of victory over Russia. Increase Ukrainian troops to equal and surpass Russian troops. Destroy the works of the devil. The devil seeks to destroy Ukraine. And Father, you are the Lord of peace. We decree and declare peace to reign in Ukraine in 2024. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And for Haiti, many local people are moving from their homes to live in a more peaceful area without the gangs. We deserve, we decree Decree and declare total victory over the gangs, Father. Defeat them, we proclaim, your peace over Haiti. Please help families that are relocating find homes, help, jobs, and peace. 
bless Haiti in 2024. And for the United States, again, I pray for your will to be done in the elections. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name, yes, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. It's all Praise free time. Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> So as you prepare your offerings, your giving, what the Lord has laid on your heart, and those who are given by phone and giveify, I didn't say glorify this time, I said giveify. So you can go and giveify and give your offerings <laughs> and uh, prepare them. And I will, uh, we still have our first fruit basket up here, our maintenance basket. So next week will be first fruits. Of Next the week will be first yeah. fruit. But of you the can month, give them you know. any time. If you get a promotion, a raise, or whatever, you know, yes. you can give them any time. Next week will be first fruit. Okay. So the scripture says, I consider it a privilege to be a channel for your abundant supply. Mm -hmm. I will not stop the flow of your resources. All that you put in my hands is to be used wisely and invest it carefully into your kingdom. I know that no matter how much I pass on, there will always be more coming to me and through me. So don't forget to name your seed also when you uh, get your tied off envelope filled out. Just name Amen. your seed, whatever you give it on your phone. Yes. Let's wave Thank it before Lord. the Lord because he's going to anoint it. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Name that seed. Second Corinthians says in 9, 7, 8, So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Be happy when you're giving your money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be great. There you go. Put a smile on your face. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficient in all things yes. may have an abundance for every good work. Yes. So if you want to bring your offering down and do that. Down, up, over. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, yes, that we yes. have something to give, to return you, back Lord. to you. You restore thank unto you, you us all the time. You give unto us mm -hmm. each and every day. When we wake up in the morning, you have given us life. Thank we you, thank Lord. you, Father God, for your goodness, your keeping power. We ask, Lord, that you touch and bless each yes. and every person yes. as they go out right now. today, right, right now, now, through the week, Lord. Supply, supply all their needs, whatever Amen. area in their life it might be. Bless them back a hundredfold in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. And um, announcements. Heary, heary, heary. I just wanted to say uh, that the healing service went very well yesterday. We Praise had God. a wonderful time. We even had a testimony of someone uh, who couldn't get out of the bed. Wow. Their husband helped them out of the bed. Uh, help them get dressed. They came, and before they left, they were walking, no pain. Well, praise God. God! Hallelujah! God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Yes, in the healing Thank service you, yesterday. So the next one will be March the 2nd, uh, 2024, from 12 to 2. And every first of the month, we will have a healing service here at Glory Point. Amen. So, yeah. All you on there? Yep. Every road leads to Glory Point. <laughs> Amen. All right. Yeah. Now we will have Pastor Tom. Amen. Praise God. God. Yes. Yeah, this is better. Okay. <laughs>
All right. Praise, well, God. praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I take authority over every ungodly spirit assigned to every hour of every day this week. Thank I you, cover Lord. every hour of every day this week in the we blood of Jesus it. over each one of you, your family, and your household. Now. Okay. <laughs> I release the priestly blessings yes. in verses 24, 26. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. You know, the peace that defies all understanding. Thank you, People don't Lord. understand the peace. I love that. In us. If we're going under adversity, we still have peace. Amen. Amen. I release the plans and purpose of God in every hour of every day this week. And may divine doors of your destiny be open wide before you with fruitfulness way to the threshold. I release angels of the Lord to excel on strength and assignment to watch over you. Thank you, Lord. And may additional angels uh, be released to every company you work for or school that you attend yes. or business that you run. I pray for wisdom and knowledge of God's plans and purpose in the midst of any challenge or trial that you face. And I seal up God's plans and purpose and divine destiny over each one of you and your entire household. In the name of Jesus and the Hallelujah. power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We receive. We yes. receive. See you soon. Yes.